Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? Oh, why am I so happy? I don't know. Oh, let's go. Let's go. That's my field. Do you like my field? That's my petrol tanker. I didn't set out to buy a petrol tanker. Someone who's a good friend of mine uh, just uh, was closing up his farm and so he gave it to me for a good price. I used to get very paranoid about, uh, oh look, there's all those trees still. All still lying there in the field, tons of wood. All gonna get burnt, I would imagine. Yeah, he, uh, he's got um, aviation gasoline in it, which is the stuff you put in a light aircraft. It's a sort of uh, manufactured to a higher standard than normal car gasoline, although I suppose you can put car gasoline. You can put it in a car, I'd imagine. But I don't know how long it lasts. So, how are you? All right? Good? Doing well? Enjoying another lovely day in paradise? Oh, hello. They're tree planting over there. They've cleared the field, they put the stakes in, and they're sort of, they sort of staple the trees on the stakes with these soft plastic uh, loops, which break when the tree gets bigger. So it's a lovely uh, Monday morning, I'm on my way to work. I've had uh, quite a restful weekend. My friend John comes around starting next week. He's on his way back from Africa. He's uh, had quarantine for 10 days, so I haven't seen him. Comes over on a Sunday and plays chess. So I have to get up early and get him from the bus stop and generally don't really get a line. So I had a bit of a line yesterday. I didn't get out of bed till about 11 or 12. Let me just get my wing mirror in. So I did a few uh, videos, uh, I sort of processed a few videos yesterday. The, with the car cam footage, it's, uh, it does take longer because I don't really have a proper workflow for that. And the reason for that is that the uh, audio, hello, 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 the X21HVB, those blooming lorries, they're all over the place. One of them nearly ran me off the road the other day. Yeah, so, uh, where was I? Anyway, what I wanted to talk about today was our, our new policy of charging in advance for fillings and treatment, you know, and checkups and stuff like that. To give you sort of an update after a couple of months as to how it's going. And I've got to tell you, it's very, very positive. I, uh, when, you have a, when you make a change of that sort of magnitude to the... Uh, surgery you worry oh no I was talking about coordinating right I'll come back I'll come back to charging for fillings which is it's what I'm going to talk about now I'm just saying that the videos are difficult because you get the audio recorded on the uh, car cam and also get audio recorded on this which is my phone and then um, in order to uh, synchronize the driving footage up with the talking footage I have to synchronize the audio and although they're I think one's done at 30 frames a second and the other one's at 29.97 frames a second or something. And so um, as a result, uh, there's a very, very slight discrepancy. If you uh, coordinate the beginning, uh, then you find that the end is like a second out or something over a 20, typical 20 minute rant. Uh, and so I have to, my, my uh, software, DaVinci, uh, will will uh, handle that. You can tell it to synchronise two clips based on the sound, uh, which is very clever, but um, uh, 
but it all takes time, you know. It's not as easy as the old days when I just used to use the, the phone footage. And then sometimes I haven't got the car footage, so I have to use the phone footage anyway. So I'm going to upload a three or four today. And then... Anyway, so that's why uh, they're a bit sporadic, and they might be the more recent ones might come first and then the older ones. So uh, they're, they're all pretty self-contained. So what was I saying? So... Yeah, charging, just to give you a heads up in case you're thinking of doing this. And, and to be honest with you, I strongly recommend that you do do it. Because um, although your bank charges will go up, because credit card, uh, you're probably paying about 0.3% on your credit card payments. And I'm paying 1.75, uh, which is like six times what you're paying. But um, the point is that... Uh, there are very very many advantages that make up for that extra commission and one is that you get a complete back end uh, behind your credit cards so you've got an online uh, portal website which allows you to take cards over the phone um, although you've still got the, the old machine if you want the machine I and mean, the patients seem to be sort of happier with the machine um, but actually you don't really even need to have it uh, you can because you can type their card numbers straight into uh... hello right thank you someone being careful down these country lanes at last um, yeah so what are the advantages well the advantage is obviously cash flow although really you can't regard money paid in advance as cash flow it, it, technically obviously it belongs to the patient until such time as uh, they have the work done. From an administrative point of view, uh, you, you've got some extra admin. So for example, if a patient makes an appointment, say for a checkup, what you've got to do is you've got to issue an, an, uh, an invoice for 45 pounds, um, which my system, which is Systems for Dentists, doesn't do automatically. Um, and then, there, there's the other thing which is like someone says like I can't come in next week can I put my appointment back a couple of weeks then you, you've either got to leave the invoice as being payable next week or go online and amend, it, amend the invoice so that the invoice is then post dated for a couple of weeks uh, which is what we do um, so you know there's a bit more admin from that initially but then uh, there are many advantages and one of them is that you know you wake up in the morning and find that two or three people have paid for their crown work or their checkups overnight or you know, of an evening or uh, first thing when they wake up in the morning they they get the reminder and so they do sort of pay and some people do pay substantially in advance you know they'll book a checkup in three weeks and then you send them the invoice and they'll, they'll just pay it that day um, and it's completely automatic the money goes straight into your bank account what you do do though when you've been notified that someone's paid you have to go back onto SFD and record it as a payment in the same way as if they'd made it in the surgery. So, uh, uh, you know, again, there's another, there's a, well, I mean, that there was always that bit of admin anyway, when you could do that at any time. Our system sends out receipts automatically. So, uh, let's say they, uh, this morning someone paid yesterday, I'll type it in, I'll date it yesterday, and the system will then send them a reminder, um, a, a receipt. Now, from the uh, patient behaviour point of view, this is where you'll see the, the biggest benefits. And that's because uh, you'll virtually eliminate any uh, PFAs. They'll, they'll basically, after a, a couple of weeks, they'll just dry up. Um, and that's because you'll get um, patients who uh, sort of just accept that this is the new way of doing business. Um, and most of them will, you know, some of them will be a bit curious and say, and I've had an invoice through, is that for my checkup appointment on Friday? And, and it says it needs to be paid by Wednesday, five o'clock, is that right? And you say, yes, that is. And, and we always volunteer, we always say, look, the reason is that we've had a lot of people just uh, uh, not turn up, you know, for their appointments. And we can't afford to give people the ability just to not turn up for their appointments and waste surgery time. Now, what they'll always say in response to this is, oh, not me, 
not me, I, I will turn up, I will turn up. And uh, they're inviting you to say, well, in that case, I'll cancel the invoice, don't worry, you can pay on the day. But I always say, um, well, as, as far as I'm concerned, the, 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 the fact of the matter is that they don't know that they won't turn up, right? A large number of people who don't turn up uh, decide on the day that they're not, they, they're not uh, going to turn up. And so it's no use saying on the Tuesday, don't worry about me, I, I'll definitely be there on Friday, because they don't know that, <laughs> they can't say that. You know, they don't know that on Friday morning at six o'clock, uh, they might got, not get a knock on the door from the police to say that uh, they're wanted. <laughs> Especially around my way, Ramsgate, might be wanted for their, for, for their inquiries, you know, or, or, I mean, I know cars don't break down so much now, and even in the old days, the excuse that the car had broken down was more of a, it was more of an excuse than it was an actual factual statement, you know, there was just always the fallback, oh, can't come in, my car's broken down. But nowadays, cars are pretty damn reliable. And most families have got two cars anyway. So, uh, well, a lot of families have anyway. So, uh, you know, you just say, well, you know, it's just the way it is. Now, what, uh, what I broadly noticed is that the patients who don't turn up fall into three categories. And this, uh, prior to this, patients who didn't turn up all used to fall into the same category, which was the, the bloody annoying category of patients who haven't turned up. And so we never really got a chance to uh, engage with patients who didn't turn up, for the most part, while they've, they're always available on their mobile phone, until the minute they don't turn up, and then, then it's straight through to answer phone, isn't it? And they don't uh, respond to a text, they don't respond to an email. Uh, because they know that they're gonna, probably going to get charged for nothing, or what they see as nothing. So we've, we've finally solved one of the big mysteries of dentistry, which is who doesn't turn up and why don't they do it? Now, uh, what you get is, you get, I think we had lost one patient in the category of, uh, I think that charging dental patients in advance is a an adverse development and therefore and I don't do business like that therefore I won't be coming to see you yeah uh, and that was some some old boy a bit like me probably and I, he said he said to me look I'm sorry I don't I've never paid in advance for my dental checkup uh, the new patient never seen him before no didn't and didn't see him obviously eventually won't ever see him again but he was quite uh, nice about it. He said, I don't uh, pay in advance for anything and uh, I'm not gonna start now. And I said to him, well, I can't give you a free uh, pass to make an appointment and cause me to incur expense in terms of surgery time and then give you the option just not to turn up. And he was like, quite understand, old boy, uh, you know, obviously we won't be doing business and that and that was fine and <clears throat> the reason why I'm making this video now is because I am past the point at which I would ever go back you know there are sometimes you do make changes and I have made changes in my surgery where I'm like uh, I've, I've, I've misjudged things and uh, the patients have let me know and so I have gone back you know to how we used to do things um, because we're always experimenting always but uh, I, I've got I've got through the, the sort of the two months or so trial period where if there had been major pushback from the patients I would have I would have conceded and gone back to saying uh, you know okay if you don't pay the invoice then you can pay on the day but that's not uh, but we're, 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 we're past that point now. So that's category number one, just people who, uh, they basically, I don't think they think that this is what they're doing, but they reserve the right to let you down, you know, free of charge. 
um, and uh, they are obviously some of the most frustrating. And um, we had a lot of um, patients, I would say, new patients who made appointments and then didn't come in. Uh, a warning sign is if, uh, let's say, a woman rings up and says she wants to make an appointment on behalf of her boyfriend, um, and he's got raging toothache, and so you make her an appointment, and then you don't. That, that's it. You never hear from them. You know. And quite frequently, I think they've just gone to another surgery. What they do is they make two or three appointments at different surgeries, um, and then uh, juggle them all based on cost and convenience, and then and then just don't bother to tell the ones that they're not going to come to. You know. And uh, that's and we can't do that. You know, we can't participate in that sort of uh, uh, auction. Let's just get past this lorry on this short section of road. Then, okay, so who's the next one? Well, the next sort of patient that doesn't turn up is um, the chaotic patient, the disorganized patient, the uh, uh, patient who's, who's struggling a bit with uh, remembering what day of the week it is, what time of the day it is, um, and quite frequently these people have uh, jobs that um, make it difficult for them to take time off. But but their overwhelming characteristic is they are uh, chaotic, and what happens is that these are the ones who uh, quite frequently miss several appointments or only turn up to like one in three appointments, and. We used to deal with these by saying to them, look, uh, you know, you obviously have trouble organising your life around a dental appointment, so uh, if you want to come in, if you get a morning off or an afternoon off, ring us on the day, and then if we can possibly fit you in, if we've got a cancellation or something, then we will. Um, which is, you know, uh, that's not because it was something that they ever did. It's because it was just a way of me saying to them, look, I'm going to give you what we used to call the VIP service, um, which is basically very few people can just ring up a dentist and, and just say, I, I'm free today, I'm, you know, can I come in today? But we used to give those patients a VIP service like that because they, they just couldn't keep appointments. They just couldn't. And the problem with those patients is that they're, they're exporting their chaotic lives to you. You know, they are... Uh, always, you know, oh, my work called me in, I'm in London, I had to go into work, uh, one of my care uh, home residents has gone missing, I've got to wait in and because and, uh, I'm waiting for the police to ring in case they find her. Um, you know, they are, their, their whole life is up in the air and generally organised on a hour by hour basis. Um, or, or they're just forgetful, you know. They're like they'd be the plumber that uh, that says, "Oh, you know, yeah, let me think." No, I don't think I've got a job on next Thursday afternoon. Yeah, I'll come in next Thursday afternoon. And then what happens is the secretary or someone rings them up and asks them to come and change a tap washer next Thursday afternoon. And and the the idea that they've got a dental appointment is is completely out of their head. And then the third, <clears throat> so we don't get those sort of patients anymore because, um, or, or if we do, they, they pay, you know, they, they pay for their work. So they tend to sort of elevate us up a bit. And then the third category is patients who are lovely patients who we can get on with really well. And, uh, and, uh, and they literally just make a mistake and forget the appointment and get charged and, um, and then don't come back. I think either because they're embarrassed or uh, they feel that the fact that we're, we're so friendly with them that uh, we've sort of, um, uh, what's the word, you know, that charging them 300 quid because they missed a root treatment was not, not a friendly thing to do, you know. They don't see not turning up as not friendly, they see, but see me charging them as not friendly. And a lot of patients, I think you have to make it clear to the patients that the expense is not, it's not like they've ended up, we've ended up um, earning 300 pounds for doing nothing, because that's not what's happened. We haven't, 
we haven't earned anything like that. What's happened is that they've made a, they've booked a plane, let's say on a trip from London to Belfast, they've not turned up, the, the seat's gone flying off to Belfast empty without them, and um, they then turn around and say, <coughs> but you're charging me for nothing. And see, the airline operator was saying, I'm not charging you for nothing. I, I, I've had to pay the lease on the plane. Uh, I've had to, I had to pay the air pilots. I had to pay the air crew. Uh, you know, your presence on the plane was the least of my worries. That was the least of my expenses. Um, assuming you've netted off any lab bills. So they have to understand that it's the time, the surgery time is what they're paying for. And if they don't take use, uh, make use of it, then, then fair enough. I had a guy last week rang on uh, Thursday morning, said, could he come in? We said to him, yeah, we can get you in at three o'clock. We send them a link by text to a short online health questionnaire, triage. Uh, didn't hear anything back from him. So we decided to uh, rebook the appointment with someone else. He then rang at two o'clock and said, I'm your three o'clock patient, but I haven't had it confirmed. And we said, no, we didn't hear back from you. So we assumed that you'd gone somewhere else. So uh, we, we've uh, reallocated the appointment. But we'll send you another text. He then didn't get the other text. I said to him, uh, I, so I sent him a link by email, offered him an appointment on the Friday, he said he couldn't come in on the Friday because he, he's got a, he's a landlord and he's got to meet with a surveyor and he, and he has to get the front door open for him. So he couldn't come in Friday, so I said to him, all right then, we'll, we'll put you in Tuesday next week. So he then rang uh, Friday, I think, and said the surveyor had cancelled. Uh, uh, and the only day that the surveyor could come was Tuesday. So he's going to need to move his Tuesday appointment. So, the the moral of that story is not so much that he, there's a guy with a chaotic life, but we can cope with that. <coughs> Excuse me. The moral of the story is that um, when his surveyor cancelled on the Friday, what he should have done is said to him, look, I've already missed out on an emergency dental appointment today because you were supposed to be coming. And now I'm going to have to cancel the dentist again. I'm not going to cancel him twice um, just because you can only come Tuesday. So um, what he did was he decided to cancel me instead. And this is, I think we have to understand this is where we are in the pecking order, you know. What happened was that that surveyor's time was more, he perceived that surveyor's time as being more valuable than my time because he could just cancel my appointment, uh, uh, you know, with no, with no penalty other than the fact that his treatment's gonna get delayed. So, so we, we do underestimate uh, our time. You know, we are too accommodating, I think, to patients. We, uh, we deserve to be paid for our time and charging patients in advance and canceling their appointments, which is very rarely necessary. I mean, generally what happens if by, let's say, Friday, Monday, five o'clock, someone hasn't paid, that's due in on Wednesday, we'll just give them a ring or usually send them a text and say, look, can you please pay your invoice? Because if you don't, the system, we always blame the system, the system is gonna cancel your Wednesday appointment. And then, hey, presto, they, um, the invoice gets paid by half past five or something, you know. Sometimes people need a nudge. The automated nudges are sent, yeah, they get three reminders and then one on the day and then one the day after. Uh, sometimes they're not enough, you know. Sometimes uh, uh, realizing that there's a human chasing up this money in addition to an automated system is, is necessary. But if you're thinking of doing it, I really would encourage you to do it. You need a system like uh, Square, which is the one we use, that's got an invoicing system built into the back end. Um, because the invoicing, the automatic invoicing system that's, um, is the valuable thing. And the minute, uh, you know, they, they bring in automatic invoicing into um, SFD or another dental system, they'll, they'll really will, uh, have, you know, will be at one, one major step further towards the ideal system. 
or perhaps Square will bring out an API that allows you to your system to hook into their system and issue an invoice automatically, you know. But um, anyway, benefit from my experience. I do it, I take the risk, yeah, that's fine. I'm a I'm an early mover, I'm a first adopter. I take the risk that you know I'm gonna all my patients are gonna get fed up and uh, and so you don't have to. Anyway, I hope it works for you and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.